Hello friends. Today I want to talk about something that has been coming up a lot lately, as it tends to do whenever creative types get together, really. How do you deal with feelings of failure and inadequacy, whether it's rejection or a harsh review or someone just saying something disparaging about the entire idea of your creative endeavors? When you're trying to create artwork of any kind, it is one of the great barriers that we all have to get through. And for most of us, like, I find that certain parts of it start to get easier and just when you start to feel as if you're getting past it, some new layer will rear its head. So it's never really over. It's just part of being human, really, I mean. Even when you start a regular business that isn't quite as creative, you still pour a lot into it. You can put your heart and soul into all kinds of different endeavors and if it fails, it's very scary. All along the way of your life, you have to decide where you're going to put your time, your energy, your financial investments. You have to make all those little decisions about how your creative life or business are going to proceed. And most of us end up having some failures. I've already talked a lot about some of my failures here as well as some of my successes. And a few of you have noted that I seem to learn from my failures. I talk about them openly. And it is true that in the long run, I have learned a lot from my failures and I've always picked myself back up and kept going. But that does not mean that in the moment it's just exclusive excruciating and paralyzing. You're not here to see me sobbing. You're not here to see me running to date and being like, I don't know if I'm gonna do this anymore, you know? <laughs> like, that's all definitely a part of it. I've had many moments where I just wanted to give up and really the only thing that has kept me going sometimes is that my writing is just compulsive and I can't stop. And whenever I have to go to a day job, that pulls me away from my writing, I get very sad. So that keeps me in the game trying to figure out how I can have time to write. I've never been able to give up. It's never felt like an option, but it's not always felt like a joyful thing to be proud of. Sometimes it feels more like I am cursed with this story. I'm never going to succeed, or at least I'm never going to succeed in the way that I hoped or imagined. You know the saying, fools rush in where wise men never go. I feel like sometimes with my writing career, I am a fool rushing in where the wise men did something else with their life. <laughs> so let's get into the dark emotions today. Pour yourself a cup of tea maybe, maybe some chamomile with some honey, something nice and soothing because we're gonna talk about failure, criticism, etc. My name is Lydia Foxglove. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a fantasy author and I've been making my living as a novelist since 2009. And here on YouTube, I talk about the creative life, both the practical, the emotional, and the creative side of it. And I feel like in a lot of ways, dealing with failure or the prospect even of failure is one of the biggest hurdles that you have to overcome if you actually want a career or even not even a career but just like a serious hobby where maybe you send out a story to a magazine or anything you have to get past that fear of failure now i will know i don't think we all start at the same place where it comes to dealing with these emotions I think there's probably definitely a divide at least in my observation between people who's Family and friends generally supported them and encouraged them and people whose family and friends belittled them and told them they're worthless or they're never going to make it. Everyone I know who had that kind of family has kind of an extra layer that they have to wrestle with where they have to convince themselves first that their work is worth sharing. I didn't have that, but I've seen it so many times. I know it can take a lifetime to wrestle with those thoughts and banish them from your head, but no one should say that to you. There are times when it can come from a place of love and support that they don't want you to fail financially, but there's also family and friends who just say things that damage you. And I've always been very honest about the financial realities of being an artist, that it is not easy. It can be a very fine line between encouraging your kids to be practical and telling them that no one makes a living in the arts and therefore they shouldn't even try, they shouldn't waste their time on it. Everyone wants their kids to be financially secure and have that sense of security and safety. I have had friends who have been dealing with these toxic messages well into their adult lives. And it makes me sad because they're my friends. So of course I love them and I think they're great and I hate that they 
have that in their head at all. But even if you had a supportive family, you're still going to struggle with fears of failure because you don't want to let your family down. You don't want to let yourself down. There can still be all kinds of layers to emotion. You know, you might be competitive with a sibling or a cousin. You want to prove that you're good at this thing that you've invested time into enough that you're recognized for it. Whenever you begin something new, it's so scary. Even if you've been doing that thing for a long time, I mean, I wrote my entire childhood, teen years, but when I hit adulthood and I was trying to make a living as a writer, it just felt like a whole new ball game. When I hit adulthood, there was this terrifying realization that I had to take all of these skills that up until that moment had been play and turn them into a real career or else I was going to have to come up with a whole new like life path and identity for myself because all I had ever said I wanted to be and all I had ever done was write. Like I had moments where I said I want to be an artist but you know like <laughs> not Nothing serious really ever came into the picture there. I couldn't think what else I could possibly be doing. And this is particularly terrifying because I had never actually finished a book in my life. So despite putting so many hours into writing, I was still basically a total beginner. Never even finished a single story, really. I had like a few shorter stories I'd finished, but I could count them on one hand, how many I'd finished. And I never finished a novel. It was all just bits and pieces. So I had to learn to finish a book for starters. Then I had to learn to edit a book. And then I had to learn how to sell a book, or at least you know, sell an agent or an editor on a book. That whole process often ends up kicking you back to the beginning of the game, shall we say, multiple times, because you'll start working on something and then you'll realize this thing isn't working, this thing isn't saleable, I gotta scratch it all and start over and you'll keep just getting thrown back to the start. I had to keep learning more and more about creating tension and line editing and plotting and what is my outlining style or do I not even have one. The list goes on. All that time spent writing and I felt like I knew nothing. And the thing about any kind of skill like this is that you usually do feel like a beginner for a very long time. If you're aspiring to do something in a serious way, it takes so many years to get up to the level of the people that you aspire to be like. Most of us have someone who we dream of having their kind of talent. And there is simply no way for us to get there without putting in years of work, without ever really knowing our potential until we put in the years. And writing my first book felt like such an immense achievement. And yet as soon as it was done, I realized I had to go figure it out all over again. You got to write another book. You got to keep doing it. So how do you get past that initial feeling that you're just not doing a very good job of this. It's not good enough and the gulf between where you are and where you want to be just feels so immense that there is no way to get over it. I truly think that the biggest difference between people who succeed and people who fail is the ability to push through that feeling. But before I talk about that, I will say that in the beginning, it's more important to get the work done than to put it out there and deal with the criticism. When you're not really finishing work or putting in hours or, you know, you just don't have good habits yet because you're dealing with those feelings of panic. Sometimes you need this long period where it's just for you, where you're just playing around and feeling out what kind of creator that you are. And the most important thing to nurture is your desire to create. And what will make you into a professional is when your desire to get the work out into the world starts to exceed your fear of exposing yourself to criticism, which doesn't mean that you're not still afraid, just that if you've nurtured your love of the art for a while, you'll eventually start to feel, at least you might, you'll start to feel this burning desire that will keep eating at you to share it. But if you don't yet feel like a burning desire to share it, and you know, maybe you never do, but I think early on it's more important to nurture your desire to create the thing and finish the thing than it is to get it out there. But let's say you are at the point where you do truly want to get your work out there and you're still dealing with that just 
nervous, shaky feeling of putting it out into the world. When I was a young adult, like late teens, early 20s, I was very paralyzed with the sense of performance anxiety. I was still having a very hard time finishing anything, and when I did finish anything, I did not dare send it anywhere. I would hand it to people that I knew were going to say nice things, basically a handful of friends, usually fellow writers where I would also say nice things about their work. And I was just stuck there for a while because I'd poured so much into this stuff, but I knew it wasn't good enough. So what do you do? You know if you send it out, you're going to get rejected. And I didn't really know how to fix it. You just kind of freeze up. I was in this frozen state for several years, just kind of going in circles, starting a lot of things, finishing a lot fewer things, not exactly improving. And at some point, that was when that desire to share started to exceed the fear. And it clicked in my mind that I had been focusing very hard on whether the work was good enough. But what I actually needed to focus on was perseverance. This was the number one skill that I really needed to get things done. So this became my job, learning to persevere. And this was a big mind shift for me because it just, it put my energy in a very different place. Rather than looking at the work and going, this isn't good enough, I realized that my job was to share my work to other people and find out how to make the work better able to connect with them so that they wanted more. The job became to fail over and over until until I succeeded. And even when you know you're not that good, it still really hurts to get that critical feedback. Right away, it was very anxiety inducing, and I would usually have this initial shaky gut reaction whenever I would get criticism. But I just kept sticking to the idea of perseverance, and I realized on a logical level that the difference between a young person who has not done anything with their creative talents and a successful adult who's made something of themselves in the arts is a stack of rejections. I needed these rejections. It was my job to get a stack of rejections. The other day I was talking to my Discord server about manga recommendations and I brought up Blank Canvas by Akiko Higashimura. I love this manga. It was autobiographical and it was about her youth when she was going to art school and she had an art teacher back home in rural Japan who was super strict, super stuck on like his rules for teaching art. Like, he's honestly kind of an aggravating character, and it's aggravating to her, too, but at the same time, you can also feel, like, the love she had for this guy and the lessons that she did get out of him. She wrote an entire manga about this man who was this mixture of being harsh and strict and also being loving and encouraging on some underlayer, and clearly it had a profound effect on her and her career. And I'm not necessarily saying, like, go out and get yourself a strict old Japanese man who <laughs> doesn't easily express approval. Some of you might even have someone like that in your house who was not that helpful, but it did touch on what I think is a universal truth that at some point you have to go through the fire if you want to be good. If you want to be good, you have to be bad, and even worse, you have to be both bad and vulnerable at the same time. It really helped me to realize that this is such a necessary part of the process. I can't avoid it unless I want to avoid sharing my art for the rest of my life. So let's say you get past that hurdle, and you are sharing your art with the world. You're putting stuff out there, you're getting critiques, you're getting professional rejections, and you're mostly dealing with it. You're starting to learn ways to improve your skill, to connect better with your audience, while also not losing the thing that makes you you. But there are still going to be certain failures that really get under your skin. And let me tell you about a couple that have really gotten under my skin. One of the ones that was always very painful is when you see an agent requesting something that is exactly what you've written and you send it to them and they're like no then you really feel like you failed at the thing they wanted specifically what you wrote and you sent it to them and they were like nah i, I do want that but i don't want your version of it that one sucks Another one that really hurts is if you do sell a book to a publisher, you might have sold it in an auction situation and you had multiple people very excited to buy it and then they put it out and it just fizzles. 
Sometimes it fizzles before it's even been released, like there's no early market buzz and everything just feels like it dies before it even comes out. Or it might get released with, you know, a good amount of fanfare and it still dies. That really sucks because people have invested money in you and they were excited about you and now they're not excited about you anymore. There's also just certain reviews that can really get under my skin that I will remember for the next 10 years. Often it's because they hit on something that I've sensed is a weakness in my writing that I wish I could improve but don't seem able to improve. Or they said something that was just extremely untrue. Like you read the review and you're like, that is just not what I wrote at all. They didn't even read the book, but somehow they wrote a very detailed review about what sounds like a different book. Those both suck for different reasons. Then there's moments when a trend comes along and it feels like a trend that you've been waiting for for years. Like this is the thing you're into and finally it's trendy. And then you put out a book in the trend and your book just flops and you go on reader communities and everybody there is hyped about the trend, but no one's talking about your book. No one cared about yours. It's just so maddening because this was your trend. This is the thing that you have been into for years. How dare readers not acknowledge your devotion in silence to this trend behind the scenes. So long story short, there are so many ways that you can continue to feel like a failure even after you succeeded. I certainly have moments where people have come up to me at like a party and are like, oh my gosh, you're a novelist. Wow, that's so cool. What books do you have out? And I'm just like, eh. Like I'm having a bad day. I don't feel like anybody should be excited about my career at all. I'll just be like, well, I guess if you want to read my sucky book that nobody liked. So the challenge keeps changing and just when you think you have mastered your feelings of failure, a new thing pops up. It does hit a little differently after you become a professional, both in good and bad ways. On one hand, you know somebody liked your work. You have sold books. You probably have some fans. On the other hand, it sometimes hurts more because you've gotten out there and you've honed your skill and yet you're still getting a lot of hits to your ego. And maybe you've never had a huge book after many books. Eventually you start to question yourself. Do I need to change something fundamental about what I'm doing? Do I need to listen to this person? Do I need to get away from what I've been doing? Or do I need to lean a little harder into this one aspect of what I've been doing? I feel like it's a little harder to get past that first round of failure because you haven't really like worked the muscles of failure yet or perseverance, perhaps I should say. But I feel like the second round of failure is the one that just keeps following you around. It's the hardest part to shake. And of course, you can keep working on your craft. You can keep trying new things. That's all good, but you're going to keep having these moments. So I feel like at this point, this is when you need to kind of go the opposite way. Rather than leaning into the hard work and embracing the process of failing and improving and continuing to work hard and putting stuff out there. The only way past the second stage is to cultivate your sense of inner worth. Like, it's almost kind of cliche, but it's true. In the end, I keep having to go back to that core reason that I became a writer to begin with. I want people to read my work. I love being able to pay the bills and I love being able to share it with people and I love it when it means something to people or it brightens their day. But in the end, what is that first impulse of creating something? It is to bring myself joy. It is for my characters to be a comfort to me, to be like kind of a family that I can keep going back to. It's a way of working through my mental and emotional issues, my way of making sense of things in the world that don't always make sense to me or that trouble me. I'm not sure that I could create anything in complete isolation because I've always shared it with somebody. Even when I was very little, I had a sister who was two years younger than me and we pretty much created everything together or shared everything that we created with each other as kind of a mutual project. So there was never a time when I was creating by myself and I don't think that I could create entirely by myself. But for many years, I only had my sister, sometimes my cousin, then later a few friends. And no matter what goes on, in the world, some of the happiest moments are just those little things where I'm talking about 
characters with a friend or talking about themes or when one of you guys leaves me a nice comment on like the doll girl read aloud videos it's not like they're making me a lot of money and they take a long time but why am i doing them because a few people have told me how much they love them and how they brought comfort to their day and i don't want to lose sight of that that is what i really create art for creating something that i loved so much and sharing it with even just a tiny handful of people who feel that that sense of sharing means so much and you might have some slightly different reasons than me too but ultimately i think that's where we find peace and depending on what our core reasons are we're also going to make different decisions about like how commercial we want to go how productive you want to be with your writing who you share it to, how you share it, or how you monetize it, or if you monetize it at all. I'm not judging what any artist chooses for themselves because your core reasons are gonna influence the path you take and you really don't wanna lose that core reason. You might end up choosing a number of different paths at different points in your career and you might succeed and fail in some surprising directions. I certainly have. But ultimately you are in charge of the attempt and without the attempt there is no finished product. So I do wish you all the perseverance to keep going, whether it's for yourself or for a small handful of other people or whether it's for a massive audience. And know that every time you get a rejection or a harsh critique or a bad review, you are in good company with me and every other artist who has ever lived. It's also been very interesting to me to experience the different feeling of like critique and rejection I get from YouTube, how different it is from writing. I was just observing the other day that like a bad comment on YouTube, it feels a lot more like when you're working in retail and someone just comes in with an attitude. The comments that are more likely to affect me are the ones that seem like either they're criticizing like something superficial, like the way I look or the way my voice sounds, or it seems like they didn't even really watch the video or maybe they just had it on the background while they're doing something else. and only heard part of it and that feels very different from a book review where there's such an investment in reading a book like when you're picking out a book you usually describe it like oh I gotta choose my next read like it has a little weight to it but I never turn on the TV and I'm like I gotta choose my next YouTube video like it's just not as much of a thing so it's a little weird because it feels more like you're just like getting a little negativity blast but it doesn't feel as personal because i always just kind of think you know they, they could have just watched a different video whereas when they don't like my book it feels like it hurts a little more because i feel like they chose my book to be their next read and then they were like nah i don't like your book and then they write a review that they probably don't even expect that you're going to see. Whereas the YouTube comment is usually sort of meant to poke at you. It's been interesting just like dealing with a very different type of criticism. I'd be curious to know if any of you have done different types of art. Like, does it feel different to you being criticized as like a visual artist versus a musician versus a novelist versus a poet? If you've done different things, I'm very curious if you've also felt that like the criticism kind of hits differently depending on what kind of art you've created. And I'd also love to know how you've dealt with your fears of failure over the years. I'd love to know how you've gotten past that initial feeling. I'd love to know how you've been able to keep going in the face of those unpleasant voices in our heads or outside of our heads. Feel free to share in the comments or if you are a member of my $5 Patreon tier, right after this chat is over, we're going to have a discussion in the chat about dealing with these feelings. And as usual, the conversation can naturally flow to whatever people want to talk about. Usually we end up in a very different place than where we started, but I always like to have my monthly chat tie into a video so that we can discuss a topic to kick it all off. And I find that it's very cathartic to share these feelings with other people. I'm wishing all of you joy and persistence in your creative endeavors. And if you have family and friends who don't support your dreams or belittle you, have a big hug from me. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time. Bye.